Loving God, you carry us close to your heart, and we give you thanks for your care through every circumstance of this life. You raise us up and call us into life, providing in order that we may turn, that we may in turn share with others. We come today with gratitude and with concern for those who do, do not experience your abundance. The world is marked by a sense of scarcity, so we pray for those who have been left to go hungry while others see only the monetary cost. We pray for those who have been offered only spiritual solutions to physical needs. May their bodies be cared for by your healing and compassion. We pray for those who have believed your word has nothing to say about our daily habits. 
May their minds be renewed by your call. We pray for those who find themselves unfulfilled by all they consume and those, by, and those whose only options are unhealthy or unsatisfying. May they be emptied of all that harms and nourished by your grace. We ask this day for your bread of life to transform us from the inside out, changing the way we inhabit this world, the way we love our neighbor the way we share your gifts. As a community, we lift up Muriel Price and Joe Smith and, and Joe Swipus and all who are close to us that find themselves ailing in body, soul, or mind. In the name of the one who offers himself to us and for us, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. lectionary scriptures this morning come from John 6 verses 35 to 59. Now that's once again a chomp. But here's what I'm going to read it. And then we're going to do a little extended study. And then we'll come back to it. Okay? Jesus replied, and he's replying to the disciples here. 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me and still don't believe. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send away anyone who comes to me. I have come down from heaven not only to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I won't lose anything he has given me, but I will raise it up at the last day. This is my Father's will, that all who see the Son and believe in him will have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. The Jewish opposition grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. They asked, isn't this Jesus, Joseph's son, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus responded, don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by the Father who sent me, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. I assure you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that whoever eats from it will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews debated among themselves, asking, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the human one and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me lives because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It isn't like the bread your ancestors ate, and then they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Anybody else want to throw their hands up and talk about David and Goliath this morning? If you feel like it, feel free to grab the Bible in front of you. It's a little different version than the one I'm reading from, but they're pretty similar, so you probably won't have that hard a time um, if you'd like. And I'm going to go back to chapter 6, to the beginning of chapter 6, so 6-1. Six, because I think we can't talk about this last chunk without kind of re reminding ourselves what goes before this. And what goes before this is the feeding of 5,000. Do we remember this story? Now John tells it a little differently. Everybody has it. John tells it a little differently. John is the one we like to tell in Sunday school because there's a little boy. And the little boy has what? Five loaves and 
to this, right? Jesus is teaching. And people, thousands of people, if you believe John's count, have sat out in front of him. He is a rock star. <clears throat> he is a rock star. He's in a football stadium. People are surrounding him. He is teaching and they are hungry for what he has to say. And when he has finished teaching, he looks at his disciples, he looks at all the people, they're out in the middle of nowhere, and he says, you feed them. And they look at each other and think he's off his rocker, he's lost it finally. He's been pushing the edge for a while, but this, us feed them? When they look around, and what they have are two fish and five loaves of bread. <clears throat> no, 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 send them away. Send them away to get their own food. And Jesus refuses. And so he takes the basket with the fish and the bread. And he blesses it. And the disciples begin to distribute it. And all of the hungry people are fed. Every single one. And you know they collect leftovers? Like an obscene amount of leftovers. It's like cooking for 50 people and only 20 come for Thanksgiving dinner. So much food. Like just an unbelievable abundance of food. He's fed them. He didn't tell them to go away and feed themselves. He didn't say, just listen to me and you won't be hungry anymore. He said, feed them. And sure enough, they ate. Just because I'm a nerd and I think it'll be fun, I want to point out a few things. I'm sorry. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there. They sat down about 5,000 of them. And Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to those who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish. Gather up the leftover pieces so nothing will be wasted. Then when the evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake. They got out into a boat and were crossing the lake to Capernaum. It was already getting dark. And Jesus hadn't come to them yet. The water was getting rough because a strong wind was blowing. And then the wind had driven them out for about three or four miles, and they saw Jesus walking on the water. He was approaching the boat, and they were afraid. And he said to them, I am. Don't be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and just then the boat reached the land where they had been heading. All right, if you are not a Bible person, and you open your Bible in the middle, you end up in the Psalms. This is, these are the prayers and songs of the ancient Israelites. I am going to Psalm 23. This is probably, of all of the Psalms, the most um, familiar. It gets read at funerals a lot. It's the one that gets memorized. And I want you to hear what I just read and then hear this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He 
makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, if we had any doubts that John is writing a credo, and I believe, we only need to look at these two stories. The people are in a field. And you know what they're doing? <clears throat> they're picnicking. They're lounging. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Isn't this fun? He leads me beside still waters. Where are they? They are in a field next to the lake. They are lounging, eating, <coughs> next to the lake. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus has just finished teaching. They have heard teaching. They are lounging in a field next to the lake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Okay, here's where the metaphor gets a little shaky, but which I still love nonetheless. The disciples are in a boat on that lake at night when a storm starts blowing up. And Jesus does what? He walks on the water to the boat. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Do you hear it? <coughs> now whether or not John intends this, what I'm offering up is a way of engaging with scripture that takes both and. That says this is more than just what this says. We have to be able to sort of mix it all. And no one can say definitively this is what John is doing, but nonetheless, it's something we see. <clears throat> you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup <coughs> overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. See that? Are we getting there? Now this is where Jesus, John's Jesus, kind of evolves into philosopher mode. That's what drives me nuts so about John. I adore the way he interplays all of these themes. I get frustrated when he gets lost in this in these esoteric sort of things. 
but we'll see if we can tear it apart just a little. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. One of the things John's doing is he's building his gospel upon I am statements, right? We remember at the Samaritan well, he says to the woman, I am. Just like God speaks to Moses from the burning bush, I am. So this is the first of what we would call an Jesus' I am statement, I am the bread of life. Uh, as we hear later, there will be others. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. He'll continue on, we'll catch those as we go, but I am the bread of life. But I told you that you have seen me and still don't believe everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send away anyone who comes to me. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I won't lose anything he has given me, but I will raise it up at the last day. This is my Father's will that all who see the Son and believe in him <clears throat> will have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. He's getting a little repetitive, right? He says the same thing twice, as though he's like making sure everybody gets what he's saying. It's a good teacher trick. Did you hear? Did you hear? Right? You tell him what you're going to tell him, you tell him, and then you tell him what you told him. Essentially what he's doing. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send anyone away. He continues to talk, and, and we can spiritualize John, and some people, like, really spiritualize John. But before we go that far, let's remember that Jesus fed the people. Right? Like, literally, physically fed them. Fish and bread is the bread of life. He's doing just what he did at the Samaritan well, right? I can give you water, and you will never be thirsty again. I can give you living water. Here he says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread. <clears throat> the Jewish opposition grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They asked, isn't this Jesus, Joseph's son, his mother and father we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus responded, don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by the father who sent me, and I will raise them up at the last day. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me. No one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by the Father who sent me. And now he jumps to the prophets. It is written in the prophets that they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. So everyone who practiced who read and learned and practiced the Torah, the word of God, because Jesus, that is Jesus' word of God at the time, right? Comes to me. 
In other words, Jesus, John's Jesus. Now remember, sometimes John puts a bit of his spin on what Jesus is saying. Not always, not enough to negate its truth, but just enough to, to make sure he's making his point. He says, no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. I assure you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. Anybody remember that story? The Israelites have escaped. Egypt, right? They've crossed the river. They're wandering in the desert and they're whining. Moses is leading them. He's just saved them from slavery and all they can talk about is how hungry they are. And if they just stayed in slavery, at least there would be scraps to eat. And what does God do? God rains bread. Manna. Literally, what is it? But they can only gather what they can eat each day, right? If they gather too much, it all molds and goes bad. So this is what Jesus, these are the two images that John is laying down for us. The Israelites in the desert and the manna from heaven. Jesus in the fields, in Capernaum and the bread of life. And then he does this really weird thing, at least weird from our perspective. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews debated among themselves, asking, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And once again, we see, we see Jewish officials, right, because that's how John's hanging them, ask the same kinds of questions that Nicodemus asked, that the woman at the well asked. He says, eat my flesh, and they say, huh? How can they eat your flesh? <laughs> Sounds about as much like, how can I crawl back into my mother and be born again? What is living water? They don't get it, right? Because they're only thinking on a material level. And John is doing both both the material level because Jesus actually fed them and the spiritual level because he is the bread of life. I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the human one and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. My flesh is true food my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me lives because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It isn't like the bread that your ancestors ate and then they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. We get that, right? Jesus, once again, isn't saying, here, let me shave off some skin. I got a couple of warts that might be tasty. Let me cut my wrist a bit. It's not what he's saying. We know that. John knows that. John's community knows that. Instead, Jesus is making a point. that his teaching, his very life, his very presence in 
the world is the thing which sustains. He isn't denying that bread and water are needed for our physical needs. He isn't saying, I'm all you need. He's saying that my presence will carry you. That my teaching, my presence, will fill you up. Do you know what it is to be full? Sometimes I splurge on Saturday nights. I don't want to think about cooking. I ordered pizza. I'm a healthy girl. Four pieces of pizza on a Saturday night is probably, well, is really not great. And you end up with that full feeling, you know, like your stomach's going to explode. Maybe some of you have amazing self-control and have never done this. <laughs> and, then I, and then I go to bed, and as soon as I lay down, the acid reflux kicks and the heartburn kicks in, and so then I have to go get my Tums. And then I swear once again that I'm never going to do this, and that's ridiculous, and the pizza isn't going to run away. I can eat two pieces today and eat two pieces tomorrow. There is no reason to fill myself up like that. Jesus is saying, I'm the pizza. Play along with me. We know what it feels to be full, whether it's to nearly be satiated, right? You're, you've eaten just the right amount. That's, you know, ideally. But we've read this story about the 5,000 people and the 12 baskets led up, left over, and they've eaten all they can. Jesus has filled them up, literally and figuratively. Some people, we've heard, God won't give you what you can't handle, right? Now, frankly, I've been through some stuff, and someone told me that, and frankly, I gave them a nasty look and told them to shut up. It's not that God doesn't give you what you can handle. It's that you can handle so much because God is with you. Do you see that? We flipped that. Jesus says, I will fill you up. The yeast in the bread, the living water, it will bubble inside of you. In a good way, not me, I need some tongues way. It will bubble inside of you. My life gives you life. My life gives you life. And your life matters. <coughs> I implore you this week. Do you like that word? I like that word. Implore. I have this week, your challenge <clears throat> is to consider what fills you up, <clears throat> what gives you the ability to give. What do you need so that you can be in ministry to those around you? What do you need? So that you can make dinner, make lunches, and send everybody to school and work and still clean the house and do the laundry and drive to, frankly, every extracurricular activity in the entire world. What fills you up so that you can do your visiting and your caring and your loving? What fills you up so that you can come next week on Saturday? and fill boxes of food and take them out to folks who need them. What fills you up so that you can be a messenger of Christ? 
so that Christ's love can be at work not only in you, but through you. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. And so are you. Amen.
Gracious God, you are our ground of being, and there is nothing we have that you haven't offered up first. Bless these offerings, our time, our talents, our treasures. Bless our hearts as we seek to reach your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join with me in Break Thou the Bread of Life, our communion hymn. Feel free to remain seated. giving of ourselves 
in his name. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat in an upper room with his friends. And when they had finished eating, he picked up a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he held it out to them saying this, this is my body broken for you. As often as you sit at this table and eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he poured out a cup and he held it out to them saying this, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin as often as you sit at this table and drink this cup do so in remembrance of me. Whether you've been doing Jesus your entire life or you are just sort of trying to figure out this Jesus guy, there's a seat at this table for you. Come and eat. There's a seat at the table. There's a place for you at this table here at Champion Christian Church, and we invite you to be an active part of this body of Christ. We welcome you, no matter your walk of life. We welcome you. And should you like to make the good confession that Jesus is the Christ, we offer our right hand of fellowship and bring you in. May all who walk through our doors know our welcome. And now will you join me in the closing hymn, His Name is Wonderful. Go in peace. 
satisfied and ready to serve. Amen. Thank you.